This video is brought to you by New Type HQ. They hooked me up with this kit by sending it to me for free to use to paint and camo specifically for you guys in this video. Today I'm going to teach you the basics of turning your master grade or any other grade Gunpla model kit or Gundam model kit, whichever you prefer to call it, from drab to fab, as they say, from normal to abnormal. First off, you're going to need a respirator. I strongly recommend a respirator with a face shield. If you can't get one, get a normal respirator with goggles. The paints I use are lacquer paints. They're highly toxic and flammable. Please do not spray these paints without the proper stuff. It is dangerous for you. I cannot stress it enough. First, we're going to start off by primering our pieces. Whatever method you want to use is totally up to you. Gray primer, brown primer, black primer, gray primer with a pre-shade, whatever works for you. Uh, I decided to go black to test some things out. You don't have to follow everything I do verbatim. This is more like a guideline. And we're just doing the usual here, spraying things down. No big deal, no big whoop. We're going to go through this as quickly as possible. Please forgive if anything gets a little wonky. There's hundreds of gigabytes of data I had to go through. Some of it was lost, some of it was corrupted. That's life. And this is a one-man operation. Things get messy. After we've laid down our primer on whichever kit. Now, this is something you can skip completely if you did not do the black primer. This is just something I'm doing, showing you the little tricks. And After we do the black primer, we can lay in whatever color we want as a highlight color. This is totally up to you. This is also a whole lot more work and time consuming. This isn't for everyone. This is just how I was going about it because I wanted to try some different things. I'm always experimenting and whatever, you know, uh, I didn't really plan this out, believe it or not. I just sort of picked and chose what colors I was working with and ran with it. The beauty of black backing, uh, black primering, basing, uh, Max Watanabe style, anything you want to call these, is you can have a more interesting transition of tones, if you will. But if done improperly, it just basically looks like appreciate. You know, this is all personal preference for painters. I've always been of the school of doing a lot of things, learning as much as I can, especially if I took interest in a subject or a thing. Uh, by the way, my paint mixture is a little off and we're going with white here. Whatever white you choose to use, you can use anything. If you're working with water-based paints, acrylics or whatever, if you work with lacquers, the principles are all the same, whichever paint you use. In my case, I think I'm using flat white from Gaia Notes because I think I only have gl glossy white from Mr. Hobby and I don't really care for glossy white when it comes to these sort of highlights. It's actually annoying to me. This process could take quite a while in all honesty and maybe I should just like let music play in the background or something because people watch it I don't know really as I'd like to do something different than what everyone else does when they're showing you how they do things. At that point you may as well have the video play and play your own music playlist rather than listening to what the hell I'm shooting up you know what I'm saying? As I said before with the white highlighting man it is a long process like you have to be dedicated to this. Now. The reason why I was doing it is because I wanted to try and go the normal route that I paint things, but also because I figured it'd be interesting to show people this because it's not something you see that often talked about, even though a lot of painters do it. But if you're not doing the black backing, you can skip all of this, actually. Now, after we finish spraying down our white highlights, we can move on to the color we want. This is a very grayish brown. It's probably a more military gray, maybe Russian. I, I can't really remember. As I said before, I was sort of just going with the flow while painting this. There wasn't really a set plan. And as you can see, if done correctly, it does leave a good highlight. But the thing you have to learn to master is knowing exactly when to stop spraying. Because if you do too much, then all the work you did under it will be completely washed away and you would have wasted your time and now you have an extra two layers of paint for no reason. If done correctly, it looks fantastic. 
If done incorrectly, it's too light and obvious. Once again, this is a skill you have to develop. Now, after we've done that, this is part of my whole overkill style. Well, one of them. We're now doing an extra highlight. Normally, if I was painting something that I really cared about and it was a passion project, I can do a color transition of up to three to five. So yeah, not a painting style for everybody because most people won't see it. Other people think it's too much. Too much work for too little payoff is what I mean. But when you do this, it does give an extra bit of a highlight. Once again, it's tricky. Do it too much and you've ruined all the work you did beforehand. But I've got a new airbrush specifically for this job. So it should be interesting to see where I'm able to take this. By the way, now we move on to the meat and potatoes. Masking tape for cloud camo. H-I-Q parts or H-I-D parts made in Japan. These are pre-cut out masking tape templates for camouflage. And they even come with a little piece of paper that gives you a guide. So if you buy this from New Type HQ, by the way, very simple to work with. There's even a template guide over there well, to create your camouflage. So this video is pretty much like a guideline, but you don't really need it that much because that little piece of paper there will fill in all the gaps that I missed. Now, when it comes to painting this, it really depends on you. You can go for two colors. You can go for three colors. You can go for four. You can go for five. You can go for six, as long as you have enough masking tape. And if you run out of pre-cut out pieces, the beauty of this is you take out your razor blade and cut custom ones. I do it all the time because you never have enough of these damn things. I think they could have put on way more pre-cut patterns than they did. It's like so much wasted space. So you're left with the job of doing it yourself by the end of it. Not too difficult though. <sighs> Hell, I forgot that paper was there. This is pretty much all you're going to do. This is the meat and potatoes. This is everything here. These little masking strips and picking where you want to put them. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. It's incredibly easy. It's just time consuming, really. It's very, very time consuming. Also, it'd probably help if you had an idea of what colors you wanted to go with. I was going with the flow. I just started picking colors out at random, looking at them and going, okay, I like this one, I don't like that one, and so on. I tried to make sure the colors remotely matched or made sense. That's probably gonna be your other big hurdle, picking the right colors. So if you got a plan, fantastic. If you're anything like me, you're probably just gonna wing it and see what happens. See, even at 500 times speed, this is incredibly boring. It is. It's like the lamest part of these custom camo paint jobs. Now, I know people sit there and go, you should do Tiger Stripe and blah, blah, blah. I have looked into doing Tiger, tiger Stripe. I just haven't bothered getting the stuff I need to do it. Now, you're going to notice that the kit is already blue now. Um, that's because I totally started working on it and forgot to turn on the cameras. So, yeah. But really, after you saw the first part, you really don't need any more than that because you're just repeating the same thing over and over and over again for as many times as you choose to have colors. So if you only want to have two colors, you only have to do it really once. Three colors, I can't even remember the numbers actually. It all hinges on how many colors you want to have on this. I think I went for four colors. Up to you to go four or less or more. Really, the world is your oyster for what you want to create with this. And as you can see, after the masking tape is laid on and I'm painting the black on, this is all you do. Do it as many times as need be for whatever pattern you have in your mind. This, the Justa is a different beast than the GM Sniper that I worked on last time. The GM Sniper, I could have a big pattern that would stretch across the shoulder onto the chest. Whereas with the GM Sniper, it's a bigger suit. It's got more detail, more components, more parts, more movable pieces. So it didn't come out the way I really wanted it to. It doesn't really matter. I would suggest doing it this way personally, so that way you have everything laid out the way you want. You don't have to do it this way. You could do it piece by piece, but then the patterns probably wouldn't match up very well on areas like the legs. So with the more pieces, the more complicated it becomes. So I suggest putting the kit together, priming it as one whole, putting on your masking tape, painting it, mask again, paint again, mask, paint, etc. 
so everything is consistent and comes together. Now, at this point, I've taken off all the tape. I don't think you need to watch a video of me removing the tape. I didn't think anybody would care. Could be a cool reveal. I don't know. I, I didn't think of it till now. Hindsight. At this point, I'm doing a gloss coat because there's slight elevational changes in the paint, meaning like since there's added layers, the paint is a little uneven. It's not major because it sprays so thin. If you care that much, you can wet sand it down to have a more smooth paint job, but who cares? You know, clear coat it and hope that makes up for some things. It really doesn't matter. On top of that, you know, we clear coat these kits so you can put on your water slide decals and your panel line work. You know, it's how it rolls really. This is self-explanatory. I assume most people know this already if they're painting Gumpla. But for those who don't know, that's why we're clear coating. Now, after we've put on all of our little bells and whistles, you know, panel lining, etc., we're going to whip out our flat coat. I would suggest Mr. Hobby's GX flat. Now, it comes in a normal GX flat and a UV cut GX flat. I'm using the UV cut, and I actually like it. I really like the GX flat versus any other flat paint. That goes for Gaia Notes, and that goes for Alkalath's flats. I have so much Alkalad clear coats that I no longer touch now. And now we're just flat coating. It's pretty much the last part of painting it. And I know this is a quick fire tutorial and that's mainly because all my camera stuff got all mixed up and I forgot some things. I apologize. But pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want to know what airbrush gun I'm using right here for the flat coating and priming, it is my Pipcom 270, I believe. I did a review on it. Check my channel. Stop being lazy. This is my go-to airbrush gun for clear coating and primering and even bigger model kits. Like uh, you can use this on perfect grades or like a really huge HG, you know, when they have like the mobile armor HGs. This is fantastic for those because it just covers so much space. The problem is it moves a lot of air and a lot of paint. So if you don't have a compressor, to really support this, you know, if you got like a small two gallon tank compressor, which most people do, this thing is gonna have it screaming. Yeah, pretty straightforward clear coating. It's boring as hell, dude. No, wait, I'm flat coating right here. Oh God, no, I forgot. Oh, I forgot to take apart the backpack and repaint the gray parts. Oh my God. Ah, sh mm. Can't believe I forgot that. I did take apart the kit after I clear coated it and then repainted the inner frame so that way, you know, everything was in all camo because I thought it'd be cooler to have transitions, you know, like, oh, there goes the metal part, there goes the armor that's standard paint, you know, but I forgot the backpack and you know what? I'm too lazy to take it apart to do it again. Also, uh, be careful taking the justice hands apart when you're trying to repaint the inner frame. Or else uh, you're gonna, it's gonna break. Uh, I broke my just hands and then I had to pin them with some uh, brass rods. Thank God I had them. Well, after it's all said and done and we've done all our prep work and painting and so on and so forth, this is what the Jesta or whichever master grade or high grade, whichever kit you paint will look like. And I can say I'm pleased with it. It came together in the end, especially for a guy who was just doing some guesswork paint. I didn't go all out in this paint job. I just sort of did the bare minimum. I did the first layer of paint or the first coat of gray with some transitional lighting. And then I realized that's gonna make painting this so much longer if I do that. So I only did it on the first color and then for the blues and the blacks, one color, screw it. Nobody's got time for that. I've got other projects I have to work on unfortunately. This is basically a video for all the people who want to know how exactly I painted the GM Sniper in his camo outfit. And this is what we got here. I think it really works for the Jesta. This blue on black and gray is not far off the original intended colors. It still gives that special ops feel and a very sensual and sexy vibe. I mean, look at this thing. It just jumps in your face, dude. It is ready to just let you have it hopefully after watching this video it's given you some bravery to do this yourself 
Sorry if it wasn't super in-depth with painting the frame and all this other stuff, but I figured if you're already painting Gunpla, you already know about most of this, I'm assuming. I just gave you enough so that you know how to do the one thing that perplexes you. Everything else with painting the kit was pretty straightforward. In fact, it's, you know, stuff you learn with your first couple kits, in my personal opinion. Oh, well, once again, I'd like to thank New Type HQ for sponsoring this video. They sent me the Jesta to paint and make the video for you for. So there you go, you know. They might have sent something else for me to use in this, but I can't honestly got remember. I got a memory loss problem. Hope you don't mind. Uh, I hope you don't have any questions on the weapon. Uh, I'm just dicking around. Oh, and the LED in the head said standard fair Bandai LED. It's absolute garbage. No, wait, no, it's not the Bandai LED. This is a third party LED. It died within like five minutes. Waste of money. 